Hi everyone, it's Jo and Rosie from Melbourne Cavoodles. Um, we just wanted to film this short video mainly because we um, know that everyone's going to have to be grooming their dogs for the next little while in Melbourne's lockdown. Um, so I just wanted to jump on and um, tell you some advice about just areas to look out for um, when you are looking up after your dogs and when you're trying to groom for the first time there are some areas that you want to be careful with so you don't nick their skin or hurt them so basically with your dog um you obviously want to be careful of their eyes um, you want to also be careful of their ear leather. So when you are grooming their face, if you are doing like a number four comb or a number five comb over the top of their heads, you want to make sure you don't grab the ear leather or do anything like that. When I am grooming Rosie's face, I actually like to um, use a hair tie to just tie the, the hair that's there on her ears to keep it like that. So then when I am scissoring the side of her face, it means that um, I'm not accidentally cutting into the ear leather. You can also use a peg, but I find the peg actually slips out. So if you've got a little bit of length there beyond the ear leather, just tie that back there. All right, so the areas to look out for with your dog, they have loose skin underneath their chin. So when you're grooming their chest, you can do a C hold around their snout up to the sky and groom their chest. This means that the skin is nice and taut. Also, I find the dogs usually on the front half and of their neck and the front half of their back, they have really loose kind of skin. And that means when you run the clippers over, sometimes it's a little bit like a speed hump. So to groom them, you can put their head down, which stretches some of this skin a little bit. Um, and the other areas to look out for is please do not groom the top back half of their legs. So they, you can't, you can only feel it when you touch it. So it's basically a tendon that sticks, it sticks out like a piece of spaghetti, and that tendon you do not want to run the clippers over. There's sort of this saggy skin or this sort of loose skin either side of that tendon, so you don't want to go near it. So I'll show you later how to groom the back legs, but you can groom below their little hock or their elbow joint. Good girl, sweetie. So their elbow joint is there. You can groom below that, just not above that little hock or the little elbow bit there. So you want to avoid that tendon. Basically, when you're coming down with the clippers, you also want to come down, come on, sweetie. Um, you want to come down with the clippers and down the back side of their bottom, but you want to have someone holding that tail out of the way. So when you groom down, that tail doesn't flick from side to side, if that makes sense. So the other area you need to be careful of is they have this flabby bit of skin right here um where you don't like don't even put your clippers near there um because that skin's so loose okay so you can quite safely run your clippers down the side of their belly you just don't want to be riding close with that loose skin right on the connection point to their leg um so try and avoid that so i will just scissor that and hold the skin and trim when you are trimming hair Try and not pull the hair and trim because you'll also be pulling the skin and you don't want to be like clipping close to the skin, particularly when the skin is stretched. Okay, so just leave the skin as is, know where the skin is, hold, hold below it and then trim. Okay, so I've brushed her out a little bit, but not overly much. Um, so Rosie has super thick ears. She's a bit like a cavalier, aren't you, sweetie? So basically when you're brushing ears, um, there's a few layers to them, or at least she has a few layers. So she will usually mat in that second section or the third section. So make sure when you're brushing, you're actually brushing the full length 
and the full depth of the ears. So let's talk about um, common areas where it is um, likely to mat. I find with my two, if you have dogs that like play fighting, they usually get little mats behind their, the very back of their ears. So that's a common place. Um, also around their collars or around where their harness has been. I don't use harnesses with my dogs because it causes too much matting. Um, so under their armpit here is usually a place where they will mat. So I would just cut that with scissors if you're able to get that mat out okay. I find Rosie's not too bad, but with my Finley, he will start to mat on this elbow part of his back legs and down here, and sometimes either in the front, um, below the knee and above the paw. And he will usually, um, a common place for matting for all dogs really is this back lower half of their body. Um, so you wanna make sure you're brushing all the way at that, that back part and also down beside their tail. This is quite a common place that people miss when they brush. So that's quite common. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Um, we're gonna get stuck into some grooming. Um, just a disclaimer, I am not a groomer myself. Um, I have learnt off a friend who is a groomer. Um, so my advice isn't complete and I don't want you to think that it's absolutely viable or anything like that. I'm just wanting to jump on to help you along in lockdown and to just also avoid dogs getting injuries from home grooming. Okay, so let's go, Rosie. So when we're talking about brushing, um, what I do with mine, I find I love this um, Atero double-sided large slicker. It's flexible um, and it's really helpful. But I find that's a bit harsh to go in with first. So when I'm looking for knots, I just use a flat paddle brush, which is actually a human brush with sort of little knobs on the end, which makes it a nicer experience for them. So I'll brush them forwards, but I'll actually fluff them up backwards as well, just to look for any areas where the clippers and the clipper combs might get caught. All right, so I will also go through with this on Rosie's ears first as well. And then I'll come back with my slicker brush, which is with my slicker brush, which is a, a real favorite. So I like using a Wild Creativa. Um, and it also, I also got the Wild set. Um, of combs. So these combs are really important um, because it basically means that your, what do you think Rosie? Um, that your blade is not cutting at the blade length. It's actually, the comb is stopping it. So what's that, a number four? The comb goes on like that and glides through the coat and actually cuts at the length of the comb. All right. so. On Rosie, I usually like, when I go to the groomers, I ask for a number three on her body and a number four or a number five on her legs. So that's like a shorter body and a little bit fluffier on the legs. I do like my dogs a bit shorter because I find that that's great for lasting eight weeks. Um, but obviously Rosie's getting fluffy. And um, so today, when I'm clipping her when she's curly and when she's dry like this, she hasn't been blow waved out or anything, I would normally use a number three when she goes to the groomers, but I'm actually gonna do a number two on her today, which is a little bit shorter because I find the curly coat actually, um, it doesn't go as short. Um, so that's why I'm going one shorter. So we'll slide that on. That's your number four, that's for your face. And that's for your body. Now I do a number four on the top of Rosie's face because as you can see she gets really fluffy and it all just comes down there like that and it gets long really quickly but that's because her coat is actually quite curly and quite thick on the top. 
I would only do a number five, which is slightly longer on my boy. So if you're a bit nervous, I would start with like a number six or a number five and then see if you like it and then go to a number four if you're wanting to. Okay, so we'll leave number four there. Um, we might just clear up our table a little bit. And Rosie, are you going to stand up that way? You'd be a good girl. Okay. So when you're grooming, if you don't have a grooming table like me, I sometimes put the collar and tie it around there. It's good to have it against the wall. So make sure your table's against the wall so they don't fall off the other side. Um, I would recommend if you're doing it for the first time to actually get someone to hold your dog because what happens is as soon as you start playing with their back area or their tail, they sit down naturally. So the way to stop that from happening is actually have someone to support under their belly like that, and then they won't be able to collapse their legs and sit down, so you'll be able to groom this successfully. You also want a second person to hold the tail out of the way and those sorts of things. Okay, Miss Rosie, let's go. I'm gonna do a number two. Do you remember what that sounds like? Yeah, good deal. Okay, now, so we're going to go down her back, standing up, good girl, down her back, what a good girl, standing up. So you basically follow the spine, she's not loving it, but she's good enough girl. Um, follow the spine down and just get her used to it, I know sweetie. We're not actually taking off a lot of hair because I clipped her about two weeks ago when grooming was a bit of a bad scenario then too. Um, so she's putting her head down, which gives me the opportunity to measure where the back of her head, the skull finishes and go from the back of the neck and grab that hair as well. And when you're around here, you just want to grab the ear and make sure you're not going near that ear know where the, your ear is, hold the skin taut, and off you go. So we're just getting some of that hair off for her, holding the ear, knowing where the back of the head is. Okay, here's a good girl. Yeah, it's a bit funny. Mummy's doing that, not the groomer. Okay, so, so once we've got I'll turn that off. Good girl, sweetie. Okay, once we've got a little bit done on her back, you can actually, along the spine, you can actually go, you can usually get a little bit more off if you go backwards. But I wouldn't go backwards on the sides. I'd go down because that, that's how you don't get your clipper marks. So I'll just show you that. I know, sweetie. I need you standing up, please. Okay, sweetie. Oh, no. Okay, so we're going down, down the body. Good girl. All right, so that's how we don't get our clipper marks. If you go horizontally on this side of the belly, you'll get those clipper marks. So that's how we do that. So you're going to stand up for me nicely. Good girl. And I'm just going to go backwards only along the spine. I'm not going to go backwards near the leg or near the side of the body mainly because you can actually get a little bit more coat off by doing so. Just be aware of where the tail is. So just be aware if it is grabbing, it wasn't grabbing overly much for her just now, um, but that's because she doesn't really have many mats. Um, if you're worried about matting and it catches like that, you need to sort of stop and you need to deal with the mat because we don't want the clippers pulling on their skin overly much because it creates a bit of pain for them. So I like to brush her up while I'm doing it. So that, so it was that back half area that was a little bit knotty still, which is a common place to get some matting. So I like to brush backwards and then just go again. Okay, good girl, Rosie. Good girl. I know, sweetie. That's better. Let's 
get some of that hair off. What a good girl. And then showing you this side again. Good girl. And then we're just going to go down. Yeah, I know, sweetie. You're not loving it, but you need to put your face forward, please. Okay. Yeah. So this is where actually things like a proper grooming table with the um, the leads that look like this. So this normally goes around her neck like that. And then I just loosely tie it up like that um, in case I need to quickly undo it if she falls off the table or anything like that. So I just loosely tie that. The other helpful thing is to actually have a band that ties keeps their behind up um, and stops them from sitting down um, but because I'm just sh showing you roughly today um, we'll just keep moving all right sweetie so we're going to go down the sides like that okay and we're going to be careful of this loose skin here we're just going to leave that entirely okay so we're just going to go roughly along here today for the purposes of the video. Um, there we go. There's a good girl. So, as you can see, oh, you're a big girl, aren't you? As you can see here, I would go, yeah, she's sitting down because I'm holding her backside. Okay, up your hop. So, I would go down and down the sides of her there in one big swoop but getting someone to hold the tail. So just remember when you're doing your legs, you don't want that tendon. You want to know where that tendon is and you don't want to go near it. Okay, so there we go. Well done, Rosie. Okay, so legs are quite tricky. Um, so they're the hardest part. So I'm going to go in with one of my cones and they don't really love it. Um, but basically I want to teach you how to hold. So you can hold the leg from behind and you can hold it out like this if you need to. You can also hold, standing up sweetie, I don't know. You can also hold the leg, stretch it out. She's not loving it. Stretch it, come on Rosie. Rosie. Stretch it out like that, keeping it long. So then you can glide through the front, okay? Are you going to be a good girl or a naughty girl? Hey? Hmm. Okay, so with the legs, we go down the side, being careful of that skin and being careful of the tendon at the back. So we just do a little Job of the knee, hold her knee forward. Yeah, you're not going to cooperate, are you? Okay. And then the back of the hock um, and in between the paws. So you can see that she's overly fussy with her front legs too. She doesn't like them being done. But the front legs are quite easy. So you just run the blade down there and on the sides and there's not really... A tendon that you need to be worried of you just need to be careful of the loose skin under the underarm if you have a mat there please be careful with your scissors because you can snip that skin there and you need to be careful so you need to when you're snipping your mat there you need to know exactly where it is so we're going to press on um, with the pores with the um, the hair under the paw you can get them standing up um, and flick up like that, just being careful of the tail. Um, and you can use your 10 blade, which is just your plain blade, and go back over it, um, over the leather, that's fine. Or you can use what is called Sheer Magic Mini Trimmers, and you can actually push um, the toe beads apart and actually get the hair out in between. So either way, you can do that. Um, but if you can avoid it, you know, you can leave it for the groomer. Nails is also one that if you're not sure what you're doing, I'd probably leave it for the groomer. 
or go to the vet if you need to. Um, so yeah, should we do your pretty face, Rosie Roo? Hey, good girl. Okay, so for Rosie's face, I have curved scissors that look like that. So these um, go generally when you comb a caboodle's like jawline down, they use a curved pair of scissors to cut there and then cut up at an angle towards the centre of the ear, if that makes sense. So when the ear is up, cut cutting up into that direction. Okay, so that's what our curved scissors are for, for that pretty teddy bear face. And then our straight scissors are to cut that length of their ears straight across, if you need any length off. And the straight scissors are also for that annoying bit of hair that gets in the way of your eyes. Rosie's quite thick, so as soon as she starts thickening up in here, um, yeah, she gets really fluffy. So there's a few ways to hold the chin. So most groomers will hold just with a, a tuft of hair at the base. I don't find that gives me enough control, particularly because dogs that are groomed by their own mothers usually uh, get a bit more fussy, don't you? You're normally a very good girl for the groomers, but you're a bit more fussy with me because you think you can get away with it. Okay, so we're going to fluff up her, her little mohawk here. We're going to give you a bit of a fro, but we're going to choose... It's all right, sweetie. You're okay. You had enough, have you? Actually hasn't been that long, Rosie. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we'll use the other brush, shall we? So we'll just fluff you up backwards and forwards. And we are going to use number four comb. Finley needs a number five comb because he's got a straighter and less thick um, bit of hair. So we're just going to do a C hold around her snout. And we're going to go forwards over the top of her head and down the back. Forwards and down the back, making sure you don't catch the ears or the ear leather or the ears nearby. Good girl. There's a good girl. Okay. And once you've done that, and once you're happy with that, go on down the back of the neck to combine it and get rid of your hair. I like to fluff it up again. And this is where you've got to get careful with her, excuse me, Careful with just where her eyes are and where her ears are. Are you ready, Rosie? Yeah, you remember what it sounds like. Good girl. Come here. And going backwards. Being careful of where her eyes are. It's all right, sweetie. You're fine. Okay, so that just gets a, a little bit more length off. And back. So then being, knowing where the ear leather is, knowing where that is, we can groom right next to it. But you don't want to lose any hair on top of it. All right, so then we turn that off. Good girl. And the basic rule of thumb is whatever length you've done on her back. So I've done a number two on her back. You do double what it is on the top. So number four on the top. So now what we do is we turn your face. So basically her ear is here. Basically you want to go down with your clippers, down that side there, but one clipper length from her eye, if that makes sense. So we're just going to go like this and go down, okay? She doesn't actually have that much hair there, so that's good. It was just getting caught on her neck hair a little bit because we haven't done that yet. Okay, so that will keep that nice and short. Now, so for between the eyes, everyone finds this a little bit tricky, but it's actually quite easy. All right, so we're going to use our straight scissors. And if you can see with Rosie, 
we're just going to pull this hair that's in front of her eye backwards and then we're going to go, do you remember what these sound like, Rosie? Good girl, that's what they sound like. Good girl, okay. So, it's all right, sweetie. So, we basically, for this little annoying hair that goes in front of their eyes, you just pull it back that way, away from the eye. And then the safe way of doing it is just coming up at an angle. Come on, Rosie, come on, sweetie. And going snip. You want to just pull that little bit of hair that sits in front of their eyes back towards the center of their nose. That's it, Rosie. Good girl. And then just snip. Okay. And pull it away. So you want to make sure that you are snipping away, like at an angle to the eyes and making sure that the nib of your scissors is well past their eye, sort of at an angle like that, if that makes sense. So nothing's going to get near the eye. So basically I like to make sure that that's nice and short and then I basically use my good girl, my curved scissors to then come in and just shape around the eye as I like. And then what you would do is you would tie her hair in a top knot, just the ends of her ears to keep that away. And then you'd use your metal comb to comb her jawline and then you'd just come through with your curved scissors it's all right, Marie. and then do a bit of a trim there okay and then you can if you're really not exhausted by that point you can pull her hair out along her neck and just trim her little jawline there um, under her beard but let's give this side a go, seeing as she's settled now, and just go like that. That's it. Good girl. And then we are going to curve towards the centre of the ear, if that makes sense. You don't want to go near the ear, but that's what we're curving towards. Oh, what a good girl. Well done. All finished. Good girl. All right. Is it treat time? Is it treat time? Good girl. Okay, this is just a quick video about equipment that I've been using. Um, so I've been using the Wild Creative Bar as well as the comb set. Um, so I love these and I've sort of written the numbers on them. So I know that that's a number four length and I can grab them really quickly. This is um, the Sheer Magic Mini Trimmer. Um, that's good for hygiene areas or um, un underarms, armpits, um, anywhere you've got matting, so that's a nice close shave. Um, it's also good for between pores, um, or you can just use your 10 blade over the top of the pore leather. Um, so these are my um, scissors, my curved scissors for the face, my straight scissors for the face. Um, and when I'm brushing, like I said, I just use my um, normal human brush for brushing first and then I go back through with my um, Atero um, flexible large trimmer I mean sorry my my slicker slicker brush um, so that goes really well um, I also have my metal comb for the face and the tail and whatever you, you want to use it for um, I also have the show tech um, dematting tool I bought this last year when Finley had mats, but to be honest with you, so this is a blade and what you do is you um, cut into the mat and break it, um, break it up into, you know, eight or nine pieces. I found that um, if the mat gets too close to the skin, um, it actually is hard to get underneath it. Um, so it's an okay tool for that further down the skin kind of matting um but i found it a little bit too painful for him particularly when i'd got underneath the mat and started to pull um and cut cut through the mat with all of those blades some people like it what i tend to do instead is i use um my straight scissors i come underneath the mat and then i pull up 
underneath the mat, pull up, pull up, and that sort of breaks it up into three pieces. And then I have more of a chance to get through it with my um, slicker brush and things like that. So I find that to be a little less painful for them. Um, so I'm sort of more of a do whatever you can kind of person um, and still try and make it look good. So that's sort of my attitude to it. All right, that's the equipment. And that's been the knocking at the door. See you later.